Uh, a lot of people are worried to call this guy the Don, Mr. Don Fabio Paratici. Some people still even now calling him Con Paratici. So I want to know from you guys, is he got Don Paratici or is he Con Paratici? We'll start off with you, Sai. I mean, I can list out the, the signings that we've signed since he's uh, joined if you want. So just to um, clarify, this isn't legally. This is just based on his signings. All in all. all in, everything <laughs> together, man. Everything together. Um... You want me? Shall I list out the signings? You want to know? Yeah, give me, give me the just for everyone's benefit, not not just mine, because I don't. Of course. Know this. So it's gone from Brian Hill, Emerson Royale, Rodrigo Bentancur, Pape Matasar, Kuti Romero, Pierre Luigi Gallini, Dejan Kulusevski, Richarlison, Bissouma, Udogi, Spence, Porro, Dan Juma, Perisic, Forster, Longley, Brennan Johnson, James Madison, Mickey Van de Ven, Vicario, Valiz, Solomon, and Phillips. And just bear in mind, the game that we played against Luton, bar Sonny, everyone was a Paratici yeah. signing, every single player on that pitch. Um, so I, for me, there's no doubt in my mind that he is Don Paratici and he has been for a while for me. Uh, pretty much ever since he's joined, I've called him that, to be honest. But I want to know from you guys, Sai, what would you think? Has he had a, he must be ha ha had an amazing tenure at Spurs so far. That's got to be the narrative, yeah. surely. Absolutely. I think it's, it's, it's been so many years since we've had that proper leadership and a recruitment perspective. I think the one agitation I had um, particularly was around Destiny when we loaned him back. There was obviously an agreement between the clubs, but um, having watched him a lot, I was so excited to see him come. I was like, oh, I've got to wait another season. And, and even with Papi Sarr as well. Um, so, you know, out, just, just for those two and to have the patience to go, we found these guys, we think they're going to be really good for Spurs um, and they're going to fit in in this certain way but we have to wait a year, which is quite incredible, really. Um, you know, obviously, in, in all those lists and in any director of football recruitment or chief of recruitment list, there's always going to be some duds in there. You can't get it like 100% correct, absolutely. And I think we know some of those traffic cones that are listed on there. Um, just <laughs> not come at all. But I think the overall factor is that he's he brought in some players at significant times. If you remember, Ben Tukurosi, Kulu came in at the same time and at a very good, convenient time as we were making our onslaught for the top four. Um, granted, obviously, injuries and things in the season after, but it is absolutely incredible to have had that, perhaps that networking capability that he had. Uh, I don't know who did the negotiations or whatever, but it was kind of a rewarding factor in the sense that all the years that we've had targets and things. And yeah, of course, we've missed out on loads as well. Like I said, everyone, you can't get it 100%. Uh, but it, it was majority of it was backed. Um, and it was whether it was paid for immediately or paid for on in installments or the next year, somehow he managed to get away with that. Um, it, the job was done. And it was, it was a terrible shame to have been pulled up about the you know, the Juventus business that was going on, of course, uh, because I think that having that continuation would have been absolutely incredible. Uh, but now, obviously, we're seeing this transition period again with some you know, new new delegates coming in um, to oversee this recruitment process. I, I don't know the ins and outs of whether Paratici is coming back or whether he's completely gone or not at this moment in time, but whether he has an influence or not, I'm sure he does to an extent. Hopefully, possibly does. Um, I think credit is due, you know, in this instance. Like, it's been absolutely phenomenal to see some of these players. And particularly what's really interesting for me and the exciting factor is, again, back to those like Pochettino era of when he first began. We I can't remember his name who was in charge of recruitment back then, but it was that ethos of we need to build a crop of players under 25. Paul Mitchell. I think it was, yeah. Uh, it, you know, that crop of players under 25 that we know that have a have a very good ability now that can listen, understand the game, know what we need to do, how we need to play. But that development process of five years, six years, that ticks the box probably in Daniel Levy's mind to understand that there's a profit opportunity there if we need to. Um, but, you know, some, it's most cases now in the last few seasons, the, the critical players have been re-signed and given contracts which is a, a good sign. Uh, but I think he, he has to go down as one of our best recruitment um, individuals, it, certainly in, in my, like you said, Ben, in, in my Spurs life, I know there's been more in, in the past. You know, Frank Arneson, when he first began, was very, very good. Uh, Camoli obviously brought in a significant amount of world-class players that came phenomenally expensive over that time. And I think since then, it's been a bit touch and go. A lot of clubs have come in with more money saying, oh, their recruitment is good. Let's nick them off Spurs. Um, and it's always been that way. Uh, but I think it was the first time we we got something right, albeit we had to be a bit patient, as I said. Some of those players didn't come in 
immediately. But I think he has to go down as um, you know an incredible asset. Whether he's still there or not is another question. Uh, but that that list is phenomenal. The players that are there, it just needed the manager, in my opinion, it needed the manager and the style of play, uh, the identification of that to make these players really stand out. Um, so full credit, I think. Ash, Con or Don? <clears throat> Overall, Don. But I was a bit iffy about the whole Nuno appointment. Um, yeah, wasn't too sure about that one. Um, his his managerial calls haven't been the best. Let's be honest. I mean, he tried to get Gattuso in. Uh, who yeah. else did he try and get in? I can't um, remember because there were so many names that were thrown into the hat at that stage, and, and you're all and you're thinking about all of them and just like, yeah, I'm not too sure about this. But in terms of player recruitment, I don't think we could have asked for much bet much more. Yeah, player recruitment wise, I think he, the majority of players, I'd say there was a few howlers in there, um, but but in, in overall. I think he did quite well. Like I think he's done. It's, it's proven now that you know, your doggy that was a great find. And for the amount of money that we spent on that kid, I just thought it was a remarkable business. Um, looking at obviously at the time that January window when we got like uh, Sai said when we got Pudzeski and Bentoncourt. Mm. Wow, wow, that's what I can say. Wow, because that completely transformed our season. Fast forward to the next January window. Um, Dan Juma, it's it, it, it's a hard one because the, the fan base was split. You know, some players were like, "Oh, he's a great player." Um, others were like, "It's not doing enough." But then you just look at Conte. Did Conte really want him? I don't. At some point, I felt like it was a bit fragmented because I didn't know if it was a Levy signing, a, a, a Paratici signing, or if it was a Conte signing, or if all three of them agreed because it just wasn't marrying up that january like wasn't really working in our favor even when it comes to like players like jed spence like i wasn't really i didn't really understand because i had no paratici went down to watch him but then conte was like oh it's a club signing so he has got a few question marks on, on, mm -hmm. on a few decisions like what was that all about do you know what i mean but again that was to do with not just him, it's to do with the club. You can't just take the full blame on that yeah. one, in my opinion. But like going back to what I said overall, like he's done amazing work. Do do we count this season as well for the players that have come I in? I mean, or? I'm kind of counting everything where he's been involved. So this summer he was involved in an in an advisory role. So I'm still like putting him as credit as part of the work. I don't know if he was as involved as he was before, but he was still involved to a certain extent. I think he was because I think he would have been around that scouting network where he would have been around certain areas to kind of recruit certain players. Don't um, tell me like, Vicario. He had nothing to do with Vicario. You know what I mean? That's, the words out of my mouth. I was like, <laughs> <I didn't say. laughs> Literally, I think that was his signing. Vicario was, that's got a, a pair of t -shirt all over it. I know um, the scout, uh, Gabardini, was off, off, he was Italian as well. Yeah. Uh, so I know, it, it, yeah, the two that marry, so people could say it's Gabardini, but I still think Paratici had a lot to do with that. And um, a lot of the players that we got were from Syria. And we know that that was his territory. Do you know what I'm saying? That's where he shot. And that's where we got some of our best business from, in my opinion. Um, Basuma was a stroke of genius, in my opinion. Um, I don't know who was behind that one, but I just think what a signing that that was brilliant. And he was a part of that. So my hat goes off to him. I know Perisic was a, it was a mixed bag because we had Perisic of the first season, and then but the way he started this season like, as a winger, like what a blow! What a blow! If we still have Perisic, like we oh geez, especially for the <laughs> like, oh that's the type of winger. So to go back to it, that's what I'm talking about. Someone with raw pace that can whip balls like. We, we could be doing something special, lads. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kidding around here, man. I think, <laughs> I think people are sleeping on some diets. I think we're going to be some diets, yeah? We're going to be able to talk. I can't wait, but we're not there yet. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. I'll, I'll come back into my show and, and say that we, we need to... We need time say it. What did you say, Ash, before? Say it with chest. No, say it with yet. chest. Not, not yet. Not yet. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm itching. I'm itching. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a realist at the same time. I'm a realist. But I yeah, mean, Don, ha Don, yeah? 
Tony. All right. Sim, Tony. like, when you're looking at the signings that he has made, you've got to say that he's done such great work, kind of, when you look at the future of Tottenham Hotspur, mm. you're looking at a lot of the players he signed, when you're looking at Rodrigo Bentancur, Pape Matasar, Kuti Romero, Dejan Kulisevsky, Bissouma, Odogi, Porro, um, Brennan Johnson, James Madison, Mickey van de Ven, Vicario, Veliz, Ashley Phillips. I mean, the future's looking good. And you've got to say, it's all down to the work that Paratici, or a lot down to the work that Paratici has done. Yeah, it's hard to say. Like for Brennan Johnson, do I think Paratici was involved in that? I don't know. It's hard to say. It really, it's, it's impossible to say because he wasn't our official sports sport director, but he was in an advisory role, consultancy role at that point. So I'm sure he was definitely involved in a lot of our business, but to, to know which ones exactly he was involved with is hard to say but especially during his time when he was the official uh sporting director at spurs um i i think he did fantastic work in the transfer market and i think more often than not he was getting things right and he built for the future really really well and that was something we'd be missing for a lot a long time we we, we neglected the youth and especially under Mourinho, we completely neglected young players at that time when people like matt doherty and carlos vinicius and bale on loan and regular didn't he give tanganga his debut big old yeah, jeff yeah he gave, gave tanganga yeah. his debut but it was few and far between when it came to mm. promoting young younger players. Um, the only gripe I had with Paratici was how he went about the manual general searches because I did think he continually went for the wrong kind of manager for Tottenham. Not just for Tottenham, but the wrong manager to kind of use the signings he had made, like Saar and Udogi and these kind of young players. He appointed managers who weren't going to play them, who were never going to use them, who were, who wanted more experienced, established players. And to be fair... Would well, you blame him for the Conte one as well? Because he knows, he knows Conte better than anyone. And he knows what Conte needs to go and win. I don't... Do I blame him for bringing Conte? And obviously, he definitely holds responsibility for it. But I feel like at that time, we were in a crisis. And we, we were so desperate for a manager to just come and shake things up. Like, if we didn't get content at that time, we potentially would have been in a relegation battle that season, I think. If we didn't get Conte. I think Nuno could have taken us down the way we were playing. I really believe that. I think he could have taken us down. So we were in a crisis. Everyone was playing shocking. So I don't blame him for like... like at the but end he won the his day. first three games, Nuno. Uh, we're, we're top of the yeah, league. Yeah, you can see how we were playing. We, we can barely get a shot on target. We can barely get a shot, let alone a shot on target. I think we would have been in a relegation battle if something wasn't done, drastic wasn't done. So Conte was the drastic thing. So I understand that appointment. Maybe we, what we should have done is just ended it after six months and uh, get top four and then gone our separate ways and build a different project. At the end of the day, we all got overexcited about what we could do. Maybe we thought um, Conte was gonna, could, have, could have been a long-term thing, but it obviously turned out wasn't going to happen. But the managerial appointments he did go for, like Nuno, as he nearly went for Gattuso, um, you know, they, they, they weren't appointments for me which um, should have been not only the ethos of Tottenham, but also players to bring through the younger younger talent he was signing. So I think he did great work identifying talent, but then I don't think he did well enough when it came to kind of giving that talent a platform to build on like the, like we're seeing now. Like, I don't know, but I don't know how much of a say he had in the Postacoglu appointment. And what if he if he was kind of heading that, or was that purely a Daniel Levy choice? It's hard for me to say. But when it comes to purely signings and the talent he's brought for you and upgraded, first we'll lower the average age of the squad and then brought through talent that we can look to the future and say, look, we can have a serious team for many, many years because of, the, because of how young these players are and how well they're doing and on a consistent basis now in the Premier League, I think he did a fantastic job. And clearly he's got a really good eye for talent. And that's obvious to me. <coughs> but I just feel like maybe marrying that with a whole structure to allow that talent to shine. Maybe for, maybe, maybe he was kind of all he knew was Juventus. And that was all about winning now and building a platform with a lot of experienced players year mm, on year to yeah. kind of consistently stay at the top. And that wasn't where Tottenham were at. And maybe that's kind of... But I think he, he knew. I think he knew his remit wasn't kind of to win now the, with the likes of the players that he was bringing in. He was bringing in young talent that was going to flourish in the future. Yeah, but he brought in the talent. But, he did, but I didn't... I feel like... He, he didn't know what to do with the talent a lot of the time. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, he, he the, man, the manager appointments were wrong for the talent he brought in. Yeah, absolutely spot on. But I think, like, where we're at right now, you've got to say a big thanks to Fabio Paratici for where we are at right now. And maybe it was always that kind of long-term vision. Yeah. I feel like, 
I feel like Levy loves him. I, I honestly think so. Of course. Because the way he if he didn't, he would have dropped him like an absolute fly when all that madness was going on. No, facts. Because he's in the consultancy role right now. And even like they're talking about um, this, this Johan Lange, big Lange, I call him. My guy, yeah, is still having Paratici in a consultancy role. What does that tell you? That he properly yeah. rates him. And even he hasn't got the same amount of power as Paratici did. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Even that for me, he's he's born as a, a technical director where he's looking at data analytics slightly more. So so for me, like that just puts again Paratici on another level. And and going back to what Sim said, structurally, I think like what he he's done for the club. Like I remember he mm. made a bus or something like he changed the bus. He got the branded bus, yeah. Branded bus, and he made them wear like Hugo Boss suits, like. He started. He was trying to change everything, and I think Levy saw that and was like, "Whoa, this guy!" And that, I must, that's some of the things that we read about. I wonder what happened, what we didn't read about, what he was doing. You know I'm trying to say <laughs> it was a brand, the- branded bus and Hugo Boss suits to go out of the conference <laughs> league in the group stages. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, let's not mention that. <laughs> well, it's all about the mentality. I think the mentality shift that I had. So you really wanted Conte. We didn't go for him, or Conte denied us, and then we went for. Nuno, and then I think he lost it. I think Paris teacher, I see him going, man, like, ah, ah, and then kind of like I told you so, we need Conte. And then I think he was the one that kind of brought Conte back in. And by the time it lifted the clock, because everyone was singing Conte's mm-hmm. name. Let's not get twisted. You man had the t-shirts, Italian. I, I remember. You probably still. Got we've we've got back. we've got two boxes full of them. <laughs> you want it? You want one ash? You want one for ash? <laughs> <laughs> so let's not get twisted. When he first came. Everyone was Antonio, like the club. We thought we were winners because also even the um, rival fans are like, oh, they might not be Spurs anymore because the mentality shift is a little bit different. They were scared. He actually had a big time manager, and even the Chelsea um, fans were like, raw. I think they've done it. Like Mourinho was a bit washed, but Conte was still in. Yeah, so I think that was the remit for Paratici at the time. He was trying to get like Sim was saying, like a win now, but we weren't kind of like a win now type of club that was no problem so yeah that's just my thing on it all right so i think uh, we all agree he's don Paratici, and i for one are very happy that he's staying on in a consultancy role because not only because of the players he has in but also the way he can assist maybe um lange and, and the new scout that's going to come in with the contacts he does have in the game because the contacts that he has absolutely second to none so i think brilliant stuff but that does bring an end to the panel show Sai, Ash, thank you so much for coming on today. 